All right, so in the previous video, we created our edit form and now we want to handle this request. So let's open our listing controller and our update method is in charge of handling that edit request. So first, let's die and dump the request and see what we get when we submit our form. Now, in terms of submitting the form to a route, this is the route we want to use. So it's a put or a patch route and it goes to forward slash listing and then the listing ID and the name of the route is listing.update. So this is the one we want to use. Let's go to our edit component and on the form tag, we can say at submit dot prevent and we want to use our form instance and submit this through a put request to our update route and that is called listing.update. So this route is expecting a listing ID and we already have access to that through our props so we can just pass it here. So we are submitting the form information through a put request because that is what our route expects. So let's see what happens when we try to update a listing. So I press update here. We get our request object of course and if we take a look at request parameters we have our properties and under files we don't have anything because we didn't upload any new image now let's change a few values here so for example i want to add update it to the title then select a new image like this one and press update and now if we take a look at request you notice it's empty also under files we don't have anything so somehow we lost all the information just by uploading an image and to show you the problem is the image i'm going to reload the page and then add the text updated again and press update you notice we do have our parameters if we don't upload any new image and we get the new values so the problem comes in with how inertia handles put and patch and delete requests when there is a file in a form so if it was a post request we wouldn't have any problem and that's how our create form is working just fine but since this is a put or patch request we are running into this problem so let's change this to a post request and see what happens going back to our website now we are submitting through a post request this time we get an error from our laravel application saying the post method is not supported and that makes sense because this is expecting a put or patch so to handle this problem we can specify the http method in our form instance using a special property and that is underscore method and in here we can pass the right http request as a string so for example our routes expect a put or a patch request so i can just say put in a string here and now if we go back to our website and press update again we don't get any error we get our values and it's in the request even if we upload a new image I just selected the same image okay like this and press update you notice we have our request parameters also we have our new file so this is what we need to keep in mind when we are working with inertia forms that if our form has a file and the request is either put patch or delete we need to submit that using a post request and specify the method in the form object using this special property which is underscore method so that is the first problem out of the way. We know we can submit the information to our Laravel application. The other problem we have is with the image that we are trying to upload. And in the previous video, we handled this undo button. So let's see what is the problem. And to actually see the problem, let's console.log whatever we get from this image upload. We already have this event listener, which is our custom event listener. And what I'm going to do here again, wrap this with curly brackets and console.log our form. So I'm inside the edit component and this event listener, which is attached to our image upload. And we are listening for the changes on the image upload. So let's go back to the website and open the console and I'm going to reload first. So this is the current image for this listing. I'm going to select a new image. So we get our form object and notice here the image is set to number two. Now, for example, I'm going to make some changes and let's say I change my mind. I don't want to submit this image. I want my default image. So if I undo this, the form instance is still keeping that new image. And in fact, if we press update, let me put this down. And if we take a look at files, parameters, you notice right here, we have our selected image even though we said undo it and we don't want to upload this so this is a problem we need to fix so i'm going to close the console here 
and go back to our image upload component. So basically, when we undo the selected image, we want to again emit that event. And instead of sending the file, we want to send null or empty. So let's just copy this and paste it in the revert image change function. Now we don't want to send the file, we want to send null. So since in our edit component, we are saying set the form image to whatever value we are sending through this component. Therefore, when we undo the image change, we want to undo the form image and put it back to null. So let's see if this works. I'm going to reload again. So if I update without adding any image, of course, we don't have anything here. If I select, for example, this number eight and press update, we have number eight. That is correct. But if I press undo and then press update again, then it is back to an empty array. So this is exactly what we want. We want to make sure we are not sending any wrong data back to our Laravel application. So now we know everything is working properly on the front end. Let's go back to the Laravel application and handle this request. We can close this image upload. And then in the edit component, I'm going to delete this console.log. That was just for test again. And also these curly brackets. So back to the way it was. And now let's go to our listing controller and handle this update request, which is going to be very similar to the store. So I'm going to copy everything and paste it in the update method. So of course we need the validations. We don't need to change anything here. And we want to check if there is an image, then save that into our project and the tags, which will stay the same. But we need to change a few things. First, in terms of the image, we want to check if the current listing already has an image and then we have a new image uploaded, then delete the previous one. So inside this if statement, I'm going to add another if statement and say if the listing has an image like this, then we want to delete that image. So we can use the same storage facade and select the disk, which is public and then use the delete method to delete this listing image. So we can simply say listing image like this. And notice we don't need to say a storage here because we are using the storage facade and that translates to the storage folder. So if the request has a file, we know the user is trying to change the image. So we check if the current listing already has an image and we will delete it and then we will upload the new one. Now, if there is no image in the request, we will just use what we already have. So again, we can grab the image element in the fields array and we will set this to the current listing image. So now this is our if else statement for the image section. And we are using this else statement because when we want to update the listing, we want to submit this whole array. And if we don't do this, the image will be null. Now the tags are going to be the same, so we don't need to change anything here. And then at the end, we don't want to create one. We just want to update the current listing. So let's get rid of this line and we want to grab our current listing and update the values. So this is looking for an array with all the attributes or the properties we need. And we can simply pass down our fields array and end this statement. When we are done with everything, we can go back to the dashboard with a status message and say listing updated successfully. So let's see if we've done everything correctly and we can successfully update a listing. I'm going to go back to the home page and start over. I will grab this new listing by John. Let's go to edit and I just want to say new listing updated and let's change the tags. For example, add a duplicate like this and add some spaces and commas just to see if everything works. I'm going to change the description a bit and keep the email and the link the same, but I'm going to change the image, maybe these cherry ones and press update. We are back to the dashboard. So that means everything was correct. Let's go back to the home page. We have the new listing updated and we can go to the detail page. We can see everything is correct even the tags. And if we go back to our project and take a look at our images folder, you notice that other image is gone and is replaced with this cherry image. And of course, if we take a look at our database, we have the updated listing at the very top and everything seems to be fine. Now let's create another listing just for test. And I don't want to upload any image. So let's press create and we need to approve that. So here it is. So I just want to set this to one. 
go back to the home page. There we have the new listing. Let's update this. And I just want to add update it with one tag, for example, more description. And then I want to upload an image. Let's say this purple one and update. Go back to the home page. And there we go. It works. Now, one last test. I want to update this listing again. I want to say update it again and then select an image like this. But this time I want to undo this image change. So pressing on this button and press update, going back to the home page, I can see that the image was not updated. And if we take a look at our images folder, we don't see any extra images. So everything is working properly. And that is for our edit and update method. And the last method is destroy. So deleting a listing, which we will do it in the next video.